All right. What you're looking at right now isn't just a flow chart, but a blueprint for one of the most stealthy and popular evasion techniques used by advanced malware today. This is process hollowing. Welcome back to suit up and hack. In one of our previous videos, we covered the classic DLL injection where we forced a running process to load our malicious file from disk. It works, but it's noisy. Modern security tools are designed to catch files dropping to disk and suspicious load library calls. Today, we're evolving that tradecraft. The diagram on your screen shows exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take a legitimate, trusted Windows program like scvhost.exe or notepad.exe and use it as a puppet. Look at stage one. We just don't open an existing process. We create our own fresh instance of a trusted system binary, but we start it in a suspended state. It's frozen, loaded into memory, but not yet executing its own code. Stage two is where the magic happens, where that hollowing occurs. We carve out a piece of the suspended process's memory and inject our own raw malicious shellcode directly into it. No files on disk, just bytes in memory. And finally, stage three. We hijack the process's main thread. We point it, its instruction pointer away from its legitimate entry point and right at our malicious shellcode. Then we wake it up. To the user and to many antivirus scanners, it looks like a normal signed Microsoft binary is running. But on the inside, it's exec executing our payload. This is a critical technique for any red teamer or malware anal analyst to understand. So let's suit up, open Visual Studio, and build this digital puppet master from scratch. Alrighty, what you see on your screen here is going to be Visual Studio with a C++ file main.cpp. We first see here the shell code. This shell code has actually been generated in MSF Venom. It's a message box pop-up that'll say hello with the title of suit up and hack. And as we move down, we're going to set the shell code size to the size of the shell code. Next part here, we're going to use notepad.exe. We need a victim process and the key is to start it in that suspended state. This loads the process into memory, but pauses its main thread at the very beginning of execution. It's frozen and ready for hollowing. So we see here, we have our create process A. We have it to the path, to the executable that we want to hollow out. And here is the key that the process starts frozen. We have a pointer to the startup info structure that we have started up here. And then for the process information, pointer to the process information structure in which we need to get the handles back here. I have basically this if statement. So if this does not 
occur. We'll get a create process failed output. Otherwise, the process will be created and it'll be moving on to allocating that memory and the target process. So in this next piece, what I'll call part three for the remote buffer, we need to carve out that piece of memory that's inside the notepad process to hold our shellcode. We're going to use virtual alloc EX for this. Now, one of the things that your scanners or items like CrowdStrike or anything will immediately notice, but we're doing it for this demo, is that we're creating the read-write execute permissions. This will be a no-no in real malware. It'll be a little bit more stealthy, but we are using this again for the demo process and we're going to be providing it the handle to the target process we're going to allow it to decide where it wants to allocate we need the size of the shell code reserve and commit the memory similar to what we've done in previous videos and to make that memory slot or that memory to be read write and executable Similarly, if this equals null, we know it's failed and it'll terminate. Otherwise, we have memory that's allocated. And we're going to now move to writing that shell code. We're going to be using write process memory to copy our shell code bytes into that brand new memory that is read write and executable and so we're providing it the handle to the target process the address that we just allocated the pointer to our local shellcode how many bytes are going to write to that which is the shellcode size and we'll store then the number of bytes actually written going to give it a try make sure that it works similar to what we've had before now we're going to go ahead this is the core of the technique the suspended thread has an instruction pointer which is our IP in x64 as most of us may know that tells the CPU which instruction to execute next right now it's pointing to notepad's original entry point so we need to get the threads context which we're going to do with get thread context we're going to then use remote buffer to change the RIP register to point to the start of our new shell code and then set the threads context back to the new value using set thread context moving on to our final piece here which is going to be the part where we want to awaken or call that since everything is in place the shell code is in memory the main threads instruction pointer has been changed and is aiming at it and now is all left to do is to resume or unpause the thread to have it execute once we have our notepad open so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna go ahead and close it I do want to build it so that we have that fresh build I am gonna go ahead and notepad 
just for the purposes of this demo I'm gonna run it as administrator we'll minimize that I'm gonna open it up here to our I need to go to my directory here process hollowing x64 debug where it's been built and now it's an application form it's an executable what I'm gonna do is double click on this and boom we have our message box that popped up suit up and hack hello as the message so in real malware this would be replaced with any other type of your shell code or your payload that it's moved up there but it never has touched file and so in this video we have seen what the difference is between DLL injection that touches the file and a fileless approach in process hollowing